schon Leute, guten Tag. An office massacre can happen at any time in any country. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate for the next few minutes is how to survive an office shooting if you're caught in the middle of it. We'll talk about if you're just a random victim or if you're the specific victim. Now the moment you hear shooting and you perceive that there's an intruder in the building killing people, first thing you've got to do is get out of the kill zone by escaping. And in this case, I have an office behind me. I just left the kill zone. I went into this room to escape. Now, the most important thing is get away from that door. That door is what we call the fatal funnel. And if you're in there, uh, in that fatal funnel, bullets could pass through that door. Now, maybe he's not aiming at you, but it could be a ricochet. Once you're inside the room, away from the kill zone, your first priority is get further away from the kill zone. Now this may mean going into another door, maybe another office, going into a warehouse, uh, escaping out of a window, uh, finding a stairwell. The main thing is you got to keep going and get to safety. Now, if you happen to be in a hallway at the time, a great place to escape if you can't get any further is a utility closet where the brooms and chemicals are kept. Uh, go in there and get away. Now, once you're inside this closet, immediately turn out the lights, find a corner to hide, preferably behind the door, and uh, stay here until the police arrive. Another good place to escape to away from the kill zone is into a bathroom, a toilet. Once you're in the bathroom, you got to keep getting away from the kill zone. And obviously if there's no escape route, no windows, no other doors, uh, no utility closet, uh, the toilet stall is obviously one of the best places to go. Now, once you're sitting on the toilet, obviously you don't want your feet showing under the door uh, if the door doesn't go all the way to the ground. So uh, get up on the toilet and uh, get yourself protected because uh, one, you don't want your feet seen and also if someone does open that door, you can jump into action and maybe tackle this guy as your last, uh, last bit of defense. Now, once you enter an office and you see that there's no escape route, let's talk about priority number two. And priority number two is hide. And in this case, I have a desk, and of course, uh, most desks have a hole in there. So just push the chair out, get yourself backwards, crawl in, pull the chair in with you, and this is an excellent hiding place. And just stay here until the danger passes. Now when the gunman enters into the room, he's just going to take a quick scan. If he doesn't see anybody, he's out of there because he wants to go kill other victims. As long as you're hiding, you're good. Alright, let's say you hear a massacre outside of the office and you hear people screaming and suddenly you hear, I'm going to kill Jim Wagner, I'm going to kill him. Well, that's me. So I know he's specifically after me. And if he's specifically after you, and this is your office, well, hiding is not going to help. I mean, he's going to overturn every stick of furniture in here. He's going to look in the cupboards, the closet. You are just not going to get away from this. So hiding is not going to help in this situation, and you have to go to another tactic.
The second option is to come into the room and barricade yourself in. Grab whatever furniture you can get, shove it up to the door, put the chairs up against the door, file cabinets, whatever you can find. And hopefully he's going to be frustrated, he's going to try to get in, and if he doesn't get in and you're just a random victim, he's not going to waste his time going after one person. He's going to go where there's a target-rich environment. about to do a door ambush you need to position yourself when he comes in behind this imagined 35 degree line from the threshold of the door if you have your weapon sticking too far out or your body is too close crossing that 45 degree line or your foot when he comes in he's going to see that in his peripheral vision and you don't want that you want the element of surprise when he comes into the room those people look in the center of the room. They don't look in what we call the hard corners. So that's your element of surprise. Plus this bad guy, he probably just got done murdering two, three, who knows how many people. So nobody's offering him resistance and he's expecting people to run and hide. Now obviously this is you know, a situation where you know he's coming in, he saw you, and you have no place to go and uh, you have to do a door ambush because there's not enough time for a barricade. So I found a case with a laptop in it, heavy laptop. It could be a lamp, it could be any, it could be a stapler, anything that's going to knock him. Now when he comes in, you're going to smash him right into the face. Don't beat him with the weapon because he still has a gun. You're going to just shock him, go for the nerve center, and then hopefully he goes down. But if he doesn't, you gotta expect that. And of course, I'm going to grab his gun after one blow to the head. Let's see how this works. So he comes in, Ale. And as he comes in, smash him in the face. Jettison your weapon, you don't need that anymore. Grab with both hands. There is no magic grab, and we go into this in crime survival, how to disarm a person with a gun. But grab with both hands. Make sure that muzzle is out of your way. Push it out of your way. Now in this case, the gun is very low. So I might smash with a headbutt, hit him in the groin, but I need to rip this from his hands immediately. Now obviously he's gonna want his gun back, so I shoot him and he's dead. Now. I can't assume there's only one shooter. I, I have to think there's two or more. So I'm not going to stay here, although I could, but I need to see what's coming out there. I need to be prepared for other shooters. So stay at this door jam. It offers some cover. Lean out and see if there's anyone else coming. If there's another bad guy, shoot him. If your attacker enters with an assault rifle or a long gun, then that's an entirely different situation. The principles are the same, but several of the techniques change. And that's for another online video. Now, for you martial arts instructors, self-defense instructors teaching this door ambush, you can simulate this in your own uh, school. What I did was took some cardboard boxes, painted them gray, I have styrofoam table and I have a uh, martial arts uh, focus glove on the table to simulate a laptop computer. And that's all you need to do this training where the instructor can view everything uh, both outside the room and inside the room all in one uh, eye view.
Now, if you're going to practice this with any kind of physical contact, you're going to need some safety equipment. Demonstrating this equipment is Nicolas Marucci, a reality-based personal protection director of uh, Belgium. You're going to need a helmet, and that's going to protect the head, eye protection, and, of course, a plastic training gun. This is the minimum equipment, and when I hit him, it's not full force, even though it's with a soft object, but just enough to simulate uh, the action. And, of course, he's going to react as if someone hit him with a hard object. Now, if you're going to practice this and you're going to use a rifle, you could always order a rubber rifle from many um, police and military supply houses, army surplus uh, stores, and just go online and look for um, replica weapons made of rubber or plastic. And of course, this is going to make your training even more realistic.